I made a video not too long ago about a bunch of different types of sand. And I got a comment on that video saying that I missed a type. And man, were they right. Because I missed one of the coolest kinds of sand out there quicksand. In today's video, I will be talking about what quicksand actually is, how it works, how to get out of it, and all of this good stuff. So let's get into it. First off, what is quicksand? Despite its name, quicksand typically contains a mixture of not only fine sand grains, but also silt and clay. And of course, it's saturated with water, which is what makes it so quicksandy. <laughs> Recall from my other videos, if you watched my other kind of sedimentology grain size videos, sand, silt, and clay are just different sizes of sediment grains. Sand is the largest, then silt, then clay is invisible to the naked eye, and it's just very, very tiny. And a mixture of all of these grain sizes, when saturated with water, make quicksand. The actual composition of these sediment grains doesn't seem to matter that much. I found that quicksand can occur like on beaches with like more quartz rich sand and it can also occur in some soils. So it doesn't seem to matter the composition as much as just the mixture of sizes of grains. Therefore, quicksand is not really a special type of sand or composition of sand or sediment. It's really just any sand or sediment that becomes, you know, saturated enough with water under the right conditions, and that's what forms quicksand. What I found really interesting when I was looking up information about quicksand is that it's actually a liquid or it behaves as a liquid under certain conditions, typically when it's being, you know, moved around or stepped on like shown in this skiff here. And this makes it what's called a non-Newtonian fluid, which means that its viscosity and flow properties, viscosity is just a flow property, it means resistance to flow. Things like honey are really viscous. Things like water are not very viscous. And these properties change depending on the forces applied to it. Typically, they change when it's disturbed, making it difficult for anything trapped to escape because the more you disturb it, the more you move around, the more it acts as a liquid and you sink down. Quicksand forms when water saturates sand and leads to instability. It leads to instability because it acts as a lubricant between grains, reducing friction between them, allowing them to move more easily so that whenever anything disturbs that area of sand, they basically act as a liquid and things sink down. When a person or anything steps on or applies forces to quicksand, the water gets squeezed out of that area and kind of creates this vacuum that almost sucks a person or an animal into the quicksand. The more the person or whatever is sinking, you know, moves around and struggles, the more the grains are displaced and the friction is reduced and thus the more the person or the thing sinks. However, quicksand is not generally as dangerous as it's portrayed in movies and such. Most quicksand isn't deep enough to completely engulf a person, and it's usually possible to slowly and carefully work oneself out. However, even if a quicksand patch was deep enough to fully engulf a human, it actually can't happen because humans aren't as dense as the quicksand, so they will only ever sink part way, like a rubber ducky in a bathtub. So if you just stay calm, you're going to stay above the surface. The only way you would actually drown in quicksand is if you were like face down on your stomach and then, you know, the half of your body that's above it is, you know, the half that doesn't breathe. So that would be bad. But if you just stay calm and stay upright, you won't sink all the way. However, that being said, escaping quicksand isn't something that's easy. Researchers have found to remove one foot from quicksand, you need the same amount of force necessary to lift a medium-sized car. So it's really difficult to pull something directly out of quicksand, which is why to get out, it's recommended that instead of trying to pull yourself out or do like the movies and take a rope and pull somebody out, it's recommended that you rotate your legs in slow, small movements to reintroduce water between them so that you can just as easily get out like you got in by displacing the grains again. You can then slowly lift your legs back up to the surface and kind of paddle out. And these are actually images from WikiHow. So, you know, in a pinch, WikiHow has got your back. I also found a video from, oh gosh, the Australian 
science something association. I can't remember what it's called, but I'll link it to the top right so you can check it out because they actually show like a demonstration of this and it's really cool. But the important thing to remember is just don't listen to the movies. Uh, you know, don't use a rope to pull somebody out because likely this will cause severe injury given the sheer amount of force needed to remove somebody like that. So that's how quicksand forms, what it's made of, and how it works. But where can we actually find quicksand? Quicksand is rare, but it can be found in areas with abundant sand, silt, and water, such as riverbanks and shorelines where water saturates sand to make it unstable, coastal areas like tidal flats or in areas where fresh and salt water mix. I've been on a beach before where I saw like a patch of really saturated sand and started like messing with it with my feet and it was bubbling and stuff, but I didn't realize that that was actually if I kept displacing it would start to act like a liquid. I didn't know that or else I would have kept going so I could see that because that seems pretty cool. Another place you can find it is even in deserts where there's abundant sand and there are certain areas of certain deserts that sometimes have intermittent water input. And so these are where you might get the formation of quicksand if enough water uh, saturates the area. And of course, marshes and swamps. These typically have a lot more vegetation. So sometimes the quicksand or the sediment beneath the vegetation is hidden, but it can still pull you in. It can still act as quicksand. It's important to note that quicksand does not require salt water. It can be found in freshwater environments too. So, you know, you're vulnerable to quicksand pretty much anywhere that there is soft sediment and water. But unfortunately, I can't really list famous quicksand localities because quicksand is a temporary condition that can happen anywhere where water saturates sand and other sediment. So, it's not long term. You can't just go see this major quicksand locality. However, there are places where it's more likely to happen than others and may happen more frequently than in other places. So there are places where you can have a better chance of seeing it, like the beach, for example. But what about quicksand in Earth's past rather than just the present? Can we find evidence for quicksand in the rock record? Well, preservation of quicksand in the rock record is possible but rare because the conditions under which quicksand form are again temporary and typically short-lived. When preserved, quicksand is often associated with other sedimentary deposits like river channels, coastal dunes, and deltaic deposits or delta deposits. So you could look for these things and then look for quicksand um, in those sediments or near those sediments in the sedimentary column. But the interpretation of deposits as evidence for quicksand is often based on indirect evidence or analogy with modern sedimentary environments. What I mean by this is certain types of cross-bedded or slumped sandstone as shown in these images down below show evidence of sudden and rapid deposition, which might be interpreted as having been quicksand, but could also be interpreted as other depositional processes. So it's not all that certain when you find it in the rock record. There's a few different things that it could be. And so you can only say really that it's one of the possibilities of what caused that depositional event. So it's really hard to say. It's really hard to identify in the rock record, really. So that concludes this really short, but I think really cool video. Um, I'm glad that that person commented quicksand because I wouldn't have thought of that, or maybe I would have, but I didn't. Um, so I'm really glad I, I got to look into that because I never would have thought that quicksand is technically thought of as a fluid or liquid, which I think is like really cool. I mean, it's sand, so that's really cool. But just the fact that quicksand exists and like isn't just science fiction, I think is really cool. Um, I probably could have made a more detailed video on it if I were a physicist or geophysicist, but I'm not, so I'm sorry. <laughs> anyway, if you guys want to check out my other uh, types of sand video, I will link it up here for you. And if you want to check out any other sedimentary or sed strat type videos, I'll link the sed strat playlist up here as well. And with that, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.